devil Some sweet release right here on the Tony Jones Show. Whether or not the name of that one, the sweet release, following in the footsteps, George, of our own Tony Jones and the Cretan Three. They are this year's 90.7 WXIN, Rhode Island College Rock Hunt reigning champions. Of course, in just a few months' time, it'll be Rock Hunt. I'm always careful with that word. It'll ever, be ever Rock since that hate Hunt mail, season. Ever since that hate mail maelstrom the <laughs> night you had a cold that you have to be careful saying the word rock hunt that's yeah, very careful i had some nasty grams come in regarding my pronunciation yeah, of that, the word rock that was that was the worst hunt. firestorm that you've ever been involved in i think more that created more of an uproar than that miss that cold induced mispronunciation <laughs> induced more of a firestorm than anyone's political views on the show on, anything on triest, terrestrial radio i referred to uh eva mancuso who i won't get too far into this who was in charge of the education department at the time as a very handsome woman and i got a lot of hate mail making fun of her appearance not that i am someone who should be making fun of anybody's freaking appearance in other words you complimented the woman I, and I, I honestly meant it, and right. I was accused of making fun of her appearance, and that was almost as big as a firestorm as at the time I mispronounced Rock Hunt. Hunt. <laughs> but well, I know, digress. Well, not yeah, but let's clear this up, though. We have a problem here with um, word usage. Yeah. Handsome these days. Now, I agree with you. If you look back a few decades, handsome equally applied to men and women. You know, a handsome woman means she, kept her, she carries herself well. Right. She's attractive. I don't know. I think the problem that you ran into was that handsome nowadays seems to refer almost exclusively to men. Yeah, it's masculine. It's mas yeah, masculine, masculine gender, yeah. yeah. But I am constantly, as you know, trying to bring back old words. Like the word smut, for instance. Well, smut has a chance. I have recently started calling people Mac. How's it going, Mac? I want to bring the word Mac back. And, uh, you know, this is when you're obsessed with communication, as I am, as you are as a writer. Yeah. These things weigh on you for some reason. They do. I mean, there are many old school words that aren't used anymore that I would like to see come back. But, yeah, I think handsome, we're going, we should let rest in the graveyard yeah. for a little while. I learned my lesson. I will not refer to women as being very handsome women you might anymore. Get away with that with Caitlyn Jenner, though. Yeah, that's, that is a handsome woman for sure. I'm here with George Garner. I'm here with Seth from Seth's Rock Report. And uh, you were talking about the alternative media, talking about kind of what brought us into this. So, Seth, how did you first become a rock and roll fan, and how did you want to be involved in the blogging side of, of covering that? Well, that's a long history there. I started out with my gateway band, which was Kiss. I still am a fan. And that lead met, you know, listening to Kiss and then finding out who opened for them. And then as you read the magazines, you learned about other bands. So that was kind of my gateway in. To rock and roll, you know, because he went Kiss, Aerosmith, Ted Nugent was huge back when I was uh, younger. And then as as I grew up and went through, there's a way I wanted to meet Kiss. So instead of doing the old Kiss Army fan mail, I came up with uh, some other friends. We came up with a Kiss fanzine, and then that turned into getting access to the band. And I met the band and other bands through that. And then I became a groupie in the 80s, kind of following all different bands. You know, I met Molly Crew and Rat. I would follow them all over the place from here to New York. <clears throat> Check out, you know, whatever they did, I followed. It was a big thing. It was great to be a fan up through the 80s. So you met the original Kiss? Yes, I have. Uh, we're going to have a conversation after the show. <laughs> we, can't, we can't have it right now because the Kiss divide runs deep. Kiss, Kiss. one of the most polarizing bands in the yes. history yes, of is. rock and roll. This is about Tommy and Eric wearing makeup from Peter and Ace. I'm sure that's the division. <laughs> well, no, just, you know, Kiss sucks. Kiss is a great band. 
that you know that basic division in music yeah, ever mean, since the beginning. Trust me, growing up through high school and going through the fist fight phase and everything about you being an admitted Kiss fan was was something. But I think over time, I think uh, it's been kind to them. Time has been kind. Yeah, it, we yeah, time kind of forgets the Kiss uh, foolishness and excesses. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think they now they're you know. It's, it's hard to follow some of the things they say because, you know, on one hand, you got Gene saying that they should make a new record, and Paul's like, no, we don't need to make a new record. And maybe Well, they did, though. I mean, I think, recently, yeah, that, right? well, that was, I think, like I say, I, I don't know them personally, but I think the problem there was that Paul Stanley wasn't willing to make a Kiss album unless, in his words, he had Gene Simmons back. In other words, not the idiot that was on the reality TV show, yeah. but he wanted, <laughs> you know, the demonic persona. Back, if well, he back was going to make 80s, an album, he jumped out too. He was doing right. Hollywood, and he was doing all these other side projects. And most of the '80s records were Paul Stanley solo records. If anyway, you, right? But anyway, but yeah, but but he, yeah, they made Sonic Boom yeah. after Gene Simmons kind of. That was a good record, in my opinion. For no, it was. It was. It was back to the original sound somewhat, which that's what was lacking. Yeah, Monster was okay, but not as good as Sonic. Right. Okay, Tony, you better ask a question here. Or we're <laughs> just going to take this and run with it. I think this could turn into an actual Kiss show, which. There's plenty of, them. plenty of them out there from the days of cable access to being the, uh, yeah, parodied late, on Family Guy. That late lamented Kiss Access show. Yes, that was. <laughs> that didn't help being a fan at all. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the best point in that show is when public access was still taking live calls and shows were produced live. And people would just, for the whole hour, prank call the program. <laughs> just, and got away with it. And filthy things were being said on the air because this was before the days of a seven second delay. And, but then on the other side of that, our friends from Monster Mini Golf now have, have moved out to Las Vegas and she works for Gene Simmons now. So talk about the ultimate fan experience from going from being a fan to being on Gene Simmons' payroll. Yeah, they have a Kiss Mini Golf there. Yeah. They also have a Kiss limousine service. That a kiss what, by the way, what happened to that and I thought it was a, you know, an abortion of an idea from the beginning. That show that they tried to launch the Kiss Football League, the Kiss. They still have Kiss Arena Football. The Kiss, Kiss Arena LA Football. Kiss is still that, does that still exist? That still exists, and they have their own little. I mean, if you were in LA and for ninety nine dollars, you get a free Kiss show and a bunch of opening acts. And most they've had Steel Panther open. They have a lot of rock stars come through, so it's not a bad gig for ninety nine bucks. Oh. But they're still doing the football league thing. Yes, yeah, they're still. In it. They haven't won anything. I was going to say, because now is that reality TV show still on the air? I think it is, but I haven't watched it. I watched a couple episodes of it and kind of lost interest, and I thought it disappeared. Well, no, they, they still push their bravado, but after two seasons of not winning anything, it's kind yeah, it's of kinda, yeah, It's kind of like watching Rex Ryan you know, coach a team and run his mouth and not win anything. Our friends from V played the Kiss Cruise. I heard that was a good time. That's a big deal. Yeah. Actually. A lot of, every year people want to be on it. No, like you said, Kiss has outlived their, you know, their own foolishness and missteps, and they've outlived their detractors mostly. Yes, yeah. it's all about consistency, right? <laughs> uh, actually, Kiss was anything but consistent. I'll tell you, the, the award for consistency goes to probably Def Leppard. I was going to say ACDC. Yeah, ACDC. Yeah, ACDC. Yeah. 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 yeah, because well, I, I, the reason I said Def Leppard is because Def Leppard was big in the '80s. Then they sank into obscurity kind of for a while. But they never stopped making their music, and they, in other words, and they've always appealed to their fan base. So, in other words, it went under the radar a little bit. But you know, they were consistent when there wasn't a big audience supporting them either. So that's you know, that's to me, they get award for consistency. ACDC has been consistent, but their, I don't know what you say, their trajectory has just stayed up, hasn't it? It's, they've gotten bigger, even right. I mean, they were big with Bon Scott, and then once Back in Black came out, that put them at a whole new level. I mean, they're coming around. Selling out stadiums. I mean, that, you know, I, which I don't. I mean, to me, they're just selling out stadiums because the, there's no more Led Zeppelin, there's no more of, of the bands that were better than them. And ACDC so, tracks attracts a fair amount of attractive young women, and where the attractive young women go, the men not folk so attractive go. men will go. Yes, <laughs> I think the only person that you probably could or band you could probably pass that baton to right now would be the Foo Fighters. I mean, the Foo Fighters are selling out two nights at Fenway over here if we're keeping it local. But I mean, I mean of, cons of consistency, doing and, what they're doing. And, and still playing a show with a broken leg. I've ha seen bands locally who eat some bad Taco Bell and cancel their tour. Or <laughs> it's their right. night to sleep on the floor in a hotel room and they go home. <laughs> I 
top, they give he gives Grohl and the band give a hundred percent the whole show, and, right. and they do a plus two hours, which is a whole other topic yeah. for bands not getting that money. Fans, the fans, the money's worth with uh, less than an hour show or barely an hour show. I'll so tell you, my award for above and beyond though, as far as coming, as far as dealing with adversity, had to be the metal band Behemoth. When uh, I saw him on tour, yep, and and that that was the night I purchased <laughs> this hoodie with Behemoth's uh, insignia on it. <laughs> Because uh, Behemoth was on tour, performing in top form six months after Nurgle received a full bone marrow transplant. Wow. You know, <laughs> I mean, so yes, Tony, like you said, yeah, so the people eating bad tacos, yeah. So yeah, six months after a complete bone marrow transplant, still, you know, hairless, he was up there jamming. Wow, that's for, amazing. For, for a full hour. So we're going to get back to a little bit of music. Unfortunately, we're starting to run out of time, but I do want to get a few more tunes in. So we'll go back to the local music now. Here is Morris in the East Coast, Mon Petia, right here on the Tony Jones Show. <laughs> 